What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Big Time Football Talk. So first, I wanted to touch on um, Alabama defeated Texas A&M 24-20. And uh, first off, credit to Texas A&M. What a comeback. Haynes King looked very comfortable. He's making plays. Evan Stewart, the wide receiver, looks really good. Former five-star, number one receiver recruit in the country, uh, according to 24-7. He looked good. Um, the other kid, Walter Nolan, was a you know blue chip right up there, five star recruit, made a play in the game, forced a fumble. Jalen Milrose uh, looks pretty good, the Alabama quarterback um, who played the game as uh, as he took over for Bryce Young, did a nice job. Had some turnovers though, but you know, like Nick Saban said, they had some mistakes, some penalties. Uh, Jermaine Burton was shoved a couple times, and he threw like a little open hand shove, punch, whatever you want to call it. Uh, got him a penalty. So there was some mistakes by Alabama, but you know, a good team win. And uh, one of those games where you kind of had the feeling that, you know, Bama was going to choke um, just because, you know, I, I think about this a lot. If you're Bama, there's a lot of pressure on you at that moment in the game, you know, just because they work so hard, put an emphasis on winning, finishing games that, you know, at that moment, I felt that a lot of pressure was on Alabama. They get the stop questionable play call to you know run the pass or run a route that was you know pretty much short of the end zone but great pay, play by the Alabama defensive back and uh, Alabama holds on to win 24-20 to stay undefeated Texas A&M falls to 3 and 3 and uh you know the seat getting a little hotter for Jimbo Fisher now and what is this year 5 I believe so you know I, here's my thing I I think that you know, Jimbo Fisher, he's always been a great recruiter, but you saw what he did with the top one, two, three classes that he had at Florida State. So give those guys till next year, uh, you know, the Walter Nolans, Evan Stewart, give them another chance to develop. So I'd give Jimbo Fisher one more year. But, uh, you know, he's got to he's got to produce at some point. And, uh, you know, you got to believe like a lot. It's not just me saying that. a lot of experts said next year could be the year. You know, well, not even could be. It very well, you know, should be the year as far as or with um, keeping in mind the uh, the talent he brought in. So, just wanted to touch on that. Alabama um, will play Tennessee next week, which is going to be a showdown because Tennessee looks really good. Hendon Hooker, you know, he's a real deal at quarterback. My number six ranked quarterback in the in the preseason, but you know, maybe starting to think I should have had him higher. Credit to Tennessee because. You know, being a Tennessee is Tennessee fan is rough, and uh, they really got things clicking. So, credit them for their start. Uh, next, I wanted to talk about. Um, so, Michigan defeated Indiana thirty-one ten, and I thought Michigan played very sloppy in that first half. I thought it was, uh, just you know, not they didn't play how I expected in the first half. You saw Quorum get that fifty yard. 51 yard run early and you thought hey Michigan's gonna roll Indiana played some sloppy football let Indiana hang around credit them for imposing their will in the second half running the ball but it just wasn't um just not not they didn't play I guess I'll put it this way I did not feel more comfortable about them playing Penn State next week um, after seeing how they played against Indiana. But they come away with the win, 31-10, and I give them credit for imposing the will, running the football well. Um, Quorum looked a little better in the second half. Um, Mike Hart, the running backs coach, former uh, Michigan running back, went down um, with a seizure, um, I believe, anyways. I'm not, I can't confirm. It sounds like it was a seizure, but um, – He's not going to be back next week. Hopefully, they get Mike Hart back. And uh, yeah, I just want to shout out Mike Hart, one of my favorite running backs, favorite players at Michigan all time. So and he's done. He's done a really good job with Quorum Edwards um, the last couple of years and this year as well. So just wanted to touch on that with the Michigan game. So talk a little NFL. The Lions um, lose to uh, the Patriots, twenty nine nothing, and uh, just you know the fourth. Fourth and nine call was just ridiculous by Dan Campbell. I mean, you go out, you have open tryouts all week, and you bring in a kicker, and you don't trust him to kick it for 49 yards. It's just uh, really annoying. But uh, I credit New England, and I credit Bill Belichick. I don't think Bill – you know, 
the whole storyline has been Bill Belichick doesn't without Tom Brady has not been a good of a coach, which is fair. He has not. I mean, the record speak the record uh, backs that up. But Bill Belichick, I've always appreciated his in game management because he will just settle for field goals, and uh, a lot of times there's this bad. Um, bad notion about settling for field goals, but sometimes it comes back to help you win games. I mean, look at last night in the Sunday night game. It, you know, it cost um, Cincinnati. They passed on a field goal. Sometimes taking points, like for example, there's a lot of teams that say you're say they're down by ten. They will just take. They'll try to just score a touchdown. You know, say they're down by ten with you know less than a minute, less than two minutes. They'll just try to try to get the touchdown on a fourth down instead of just taking the three points. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, a lot of times Bilicek will just take three to try to cut it to a one-score game because, you know, a lot of times you just, you know, what was it, John Mann used to have that quote, a lot of times you just need to to get what you need, you know, not um, take what you can get. Um, so credit Bill Bilicek, he not just game manager, really just coached out or out-coached Dan Campbell um, all game long yesterday. Nice game from Ramadre, Ramadre Stevenson, the running back. I thought ba- Bailey Zappi looked pretty good. Um, I don't, I'm not really sure how good he is going to be moving forward. Um, we'll see when Mac Jones comes back, but a nice win for the Patriots. And then for my, just a, a poor showing by the Detroit Lions. They had, you know, multiple guys go down in the secondary. Um, Savion Smith, um, it looks like hopefully he's going to be okay. Um, Elliot, Deshaun Elliott went down. Okuda, luckily they were able to get back in the game. But uh, the Lions defense a little better, forced a punt, forced some field goals. So I guess you'll take some small wins, but uh, just horrible decision-making by uh, Dan Campbell, just continuing to go for it on fourth down. The fourth and nine was ridiculous. And uh, Lions fall to one and four. New England goes to two and three. So that's what I wanted to touch on as far as NFL goes. Um, Texas. Texas beat Oklahoma 49-0. Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers is the man. And I tell you what, I'll make this statement. I think Ewers should be a top two pick in next year's draft, the 2024 draft. He's just that talented. I mean, it really. I've always said this for years. You can tell a great player is great because they make it look effortless. And Quinn Ewers just makes it look effortless. I mean, you want to you want to throw throw from different iron angles, check. Throw on the run, check. Throw downfield with accuracy, check. Throw over the middle with accuracy. Throw into tight coverage with accuracy, check, check, check. Quinn Ewers, everything you want, size, arm strength, composure, confidence, everything you want in a quarterback, Quinn Ewers has got it. And, uh, you know, that's start the hype, baby. That's start the hype train for Quinn Ewers. Top two pick in the 2024 draft. I mean, Caleb Williams is going to be right up there. Um, so, yeah, I love what I've seen, and it's too bad – Obviously, if there's, you know, if you're a, a col- the college football genie, if you could get one wish, I think a lot of college football fans, that wish would be to uh, see what Texas would have done if Quinn, Quinn Ewers would have stayed in the Alabama game and if he would have been healthy for the Texas Tech game as well. So, but yeah, I love Quinn Ewers. Can't emphasize that enough. I'm anxious to see what Texas does the rest of the year. Um, I'd love to see him win out. I think I I think that's fairly realistic. Um, obviously things are, you know, it doesn't always work that way. You, you know, you see a hot team playing well, look at Georgia after they beat Oregon week one, you thought they were just going to win out and, uh, continue to roll, but it, it's, it's been, you know, a little bit of a shaky roller coaster for Georgia now. So, uh, it'll be interesting though, but, uh, credit Ewers, credit Texas as a team, um, obviously Oklahoma has just fallen apart, but you got to give credit to Texas for just going out not playing down to their level, going out and just bludgeoning Oklahoma in the, in the Red River rivalry. So, and then uh, yeah, I want to talk. I'll talk a little more Tennessee football. So yeah, Hendon Hooker. Hendon Hooker looks awesome, and that what a fantastic win um, over LSU. Really, just beat the brakes off of LSU, and that was a game where I almost was going to take. LSU at whatever minus two and a half, I believe it was, but man, Tennessee means business and just, you know, a lot of times at this year, at this point in the season, you're like, oh, here goes, you know, Tennessee playing the LSUs of the world, the Alabamas, here comes, you kind of just want to pencil it in as a loss, but Tennessee just rolling now. I mean, 
Hendon Hooker. You've seen the receiver Brew McCoy. He's getting kind of a revelation. Former five star, bounced around USC and Texas. Looks like he's finally found a good fit at Tennessee. And uh, yeah, I'm loving it. And uh, I'm happy for Tennessee. And I'm excited to see what goes down against Alabama. It's uh, you know, it's got the makings to be a showdown. You'd have to, you know, deep down. Even I'd say this, even if you're in Alabama, if you had to be happy for Tennessee to be back and relevant again. I mean, I'm not even a Tennessee fan, but I've always talked with my dad and I've talked to people um, just in general that like Tennessee, that's got to be one of the toughest teams to be a fan of because it wasn't like obviously I was only a year old, but it, you know, to most people, it wasn't that long ago. Peyton Manning was right there as far as you know the Heisman conversation and then you know they won the national title in 98 and now Tennessee football is uh it appears to be you know they have something uh, they have something brewing here we'll see what what happens against Alabama I know that's the second time I've said that but it's uh this is really if Tennessee like I'd say they made a statement against LSU you want to put you really want to put a stamp down and make a huge statement it's a uh, it's this Saturday, third Saturday in October against Alabama. You go out, Hendon Hooker balls out. Um, that hype for Heisman and that hype for you know Heupel, Josh Heupel, their head coach. That the Tennessee hype is going to get real, and it's going to get real quick if they go out and have a strong showing against Alabama. So credit Tennessee uh, for what they've done so far. So next, I want I want to talk a little bit about Ohio State, Michigan State. And uh, I'll say this, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a stud. Uh, shout out him. What a great game he had against Michigan State. You know, just like his dad, a, just a phenomenal receiver. But the um, thing about Marvin Harrison Jr. is he's just got size and he just uses it to his advantage. He saw that uh, nice catch he had going up over uh, Brantley and then he had another one going over, I forget what the other cornerback's name from Michigan State, but he hit, went up and, uh, and got it over him. So... Marvin Harrison looks good. C.J. Stroud looks good through six touchdown passes in this game. Travion Henderson uh, is doing some nice things, too. Hopefully you can get him to stay healthy, though. But uh, Ohio State football is cooking. And, uh, yeah, that offense, everyone knew this offense was going to be a problem as far as uh, for opponents. But, uh, you know, the defense wasn't questioned. The defense appears to be really good. They got that guy in the interior. I forget, is it Williams? Looks pretty good. You know, you got Sawyer year two, JT Tamalale, um, you know, Eichenberg, you know, Hickman's a safety that'll come downhill and hit you. Denzel Burke appears to be a, a pretty solid corner as well. So you got guys taking the next step. You've got help and, you know, you've improved the interior. You got a very solid offensive line, good running back, good core receivers. I really like Mecca Obuka as well. I think he's a good football player. So. You know, Ohio State trending in the right directions, and uh, their Vegas odds to win the national title just it, it's going up exponentially. A lot of people, including Joel Klatt, uh, respectable or people that are well respected, have them number one uh, ranked team in the nation. And uh, I can't really debate it. I would not have. I would still have Alabama number one. I think there's something about this Alabama team. <laughs> And, uh, you know, just by ba- – this is kind of lazy analysis, if you will, but just, you know, Alabama, they they win the national title about every year and it's or every other year, and it seems like every other year there's something special about a team. I think this Alabama team has something special. And uh, I think in years where they don't win it, that A&M ending would not go in their favor. So that's why I'm sticking with Alabama. I think that, you know, their defense is still really good. I mean, the secondary is – Played outstanding. Brian Branch, um, you know, Kool Aid McKinstry looks pretty good. I didn't, I wasn't really impressed with this freshman campaign, but like I said, with Ohio State's, you know, young defenders, it seems like Kool Aid's taking the the next step in his development. And, uh, you know, Will Anderson, just a freak of nature. I mean, the number one pick is going to be interesting because, you know, you got CJ Stroud, CJ Stroud, a good football player, but you got the Ohio State stigma. You know, is this going to be another Ohio State guy that fails? And then you have, um, you know, Bryce Young. Bryce Young uh, dealing with a shoulder injury, but still phenomenal career Heisman campaign last year. And then you got Will Anderson, who, you know, even though his stats aren't, 
you know, super eye popping this year. The guy's just getting pressure uh, constantly. You know, quarterbacks are so aware of it. You know, you saw Haynes King just bail out and just just get the heck out of his way because he wanted no part of, you know, Will Anderson. It was just, you know, drop back, get out of the pocket because, you know, Will Anderson's coming. And he's coming with bad intentions. So, you know, those three guys right in the mix. I like Jalen Carter. I like Miles Murphy. Obviously, I do uh, mix and draft talk, so I'll continue to talk more about that. So, uh, that's what I that's what I wanted to just add there as far as uh, you know the NFL draft goes. So uh, I think I'll wrap this episode with that. Uh, that's all I wanted to uh, touch on. Thanks you guys so much for the continued support of the channel. Make sure to stay tuned for more clips and episodes from the show. Till next time, peace.